So this poem is actually inspired by and is a product of creative flight that I subconsciously alighted on, on seeing the unfolding of paternal love by Professor Jigdeer Singh and Amandeep Singh on the foreheads of two Native American girls on the land of Colorado. And I address these two little Native American girls as tenderlings in my poem. They were barely five years and three years of age. And the scene that unfolded on, in, in the Ma Monument Valley in Colorado just, just you know, was, was the genesis of this poem, laid the genesis of this poem. The celestial fountain of innocence and the luminescence of universal love fused to birth the rainbow of peace and basked its glory in the twig of dove. The dove perching on the wings of the hawk alighted from the womb of heaven as a herald and the duo perambulated around the ring the ring that was studded with topaz and emerald. The arced corridors of heaven watched in awe, and despite their lofty and hubristic stature, ached to plunge into the abyss of the blue planet to nestle themselves in the lap of Earth's nature. And so they saddled atop the Pegasus and sailed through the celestial highways to settle on a land that many long and crave for, and affixed themselves as fixtures on its nights and days. On this bespectacled land, the horizon stitched the rugs of soil and dome of sky in foreordain. Laid strewed upon the Azurian fabric were whiffs of dreams, and the tapestry of sandstone and bronze hues smeared the terrain. The rafters of the Colorado River met the natators of the Ravi's waters, and on the raised podiums of saffron sands unfolded a rendezvous to the bystanders. The almond eyes of the two tenderling trotters of Rockies befell the hazel eyes of the Himalayas turbaned wayfarers, and the art crowns of fixtures lifted their veils to behold the communion's glares. The symphony of two flutes struck a common chord in the bosoms of the parties, and the radiance of the wayfarers' ecstatic selves glistened in their pearly smiles to craft new amities. The tenderling's mother closed her eyes in silence and her inner self shattered all its escalades. It was a calling of her forefathers from celestial trenches, from the invisible spaces of timeless arcades. The countenance, the countenance of her ancestors and the visage of the wayfarers, the rhythmic pulse of her ancestors and the echoing silence of the wayfarers, the furry touch of her ancestors and the supple ambience of the hands of the wayfarers, the dreamy spatial gazes of her ancestors, and the transcendent glory in the eyes of the wayfarers. The likeness, the likeness amongst the two icons were quite a many, and the alighting of the wayfarers on her land was pure uncanny. Ah, here, on the sky of her mind, new eyes were born. The sight of her vision quest dawned as sun and moon, and she saw herself walking amidst fields of corn. I want to tell you that Native Americans have a cultural uh, practice of vision quest. So, the vision quest is that in a life, they are not to be able to do their own work and self search. ਉਹ ਸੈਲਫ ਸਰਚ ਦੇ ਅਧੀਨ ਉਹ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਦਿਨ ਨੇਚਰ ਚ ਸਪੈਂਡ ਕਰਦੇ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਜੇ ਕੋਈ ਉਸ ਟਾਈਮ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਸਪਿਰਚੁਅਲ ਮੋਟੀਵੇਸ਼ਨ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਘਰ ਵਾਪਸੀ ਲਈ ਇਨਕਰੇਜ ਕਰਦੀ ਤਾਂ ਘਰ ਆ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਕਦੇ ਕਦੇ ਉਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਵੀ ਸੀ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਸੋ ਇਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਕੁਐਸਟ ਇੱਕ ਨੇਟਿਵ ਅਮਰੀਕਨ ਕਲਚਰ ਦਾ ਇੱਕ ਇੰਟੈਗਰਲ ਪਾਰਟ ਹੈ ਹੁਣ ਯੂ نو ਮਾਡਰਨ ਕੰਟੈਂਪਰ
चीज़ आप रेलिवेंस लूज कर रही है या ओनली फॉलो नहीं हो रही बट अपने कल्चर का पार्ट सी सो ना मैं दोबारा रिपीट कर दिया आह हियर ऑन द स्काई ऑफ हर माइंड न्यू आईज वर बॉर्न द साइट ऑफ हर विजन क्वेस्ट डॉन द सन एंड मून एंड शी सॉ हर सेल्फ वॉकिंग अमिस्ट फील्स ऑफ कॉर्न she treaded for days to behold the sun and moon from close and belabored the numbing of her feet with a resolve so pure she withstood the pricks of the prickly pear and suffered the demise of the vidin epicure with each passing day the sun and moon appeared closer and the sails of winds blew slower and mellower the drizzles of water atop her silken hair no longer numbed her and an unknown spirit embarked to be her guardian in door she knew a spirit was beckoning at her and knew that her arms and feet no longer fled she knew not though who the spirit was and to where and for why was she being led at the junction of a valley and a high rise mountain the sun and the moon were swimming in colorado's rivers waters and from within the gleaming sizzles of their silver and gold emerged the visages of the very two wayfarer painters <laughs> the matron opened her eyes and garnered her tenderlings in her arms she gazed at the wayfarer painters with a plumbing appeal and her tenderlings showered upon the painters their charms The wayfarers approached the tenderlings, their arms and hands becoming umbrella of the sky. Their embracing the tenderlings invited the lady of spring to cull all speck and space that was parched and dry. The painters kissed on the forehead of the tenderlings, ushered a rampant breeze from lotus land, and filled the air with a fragrance so pristine that the wayfarers knew it was time to disband for the feet for the feet had descended on the matron's earth and the lotus had now graced her land the tryst of the wayfarers on this land was complete and their bodies disappeared amidst the dunes of sand over the valleys and rivers of the matron's land now sprawl zephyrs and breezes forever They sing the saga of the wayfarer and the matron. Their symphony lives on. Our lives, though, are short, so ever. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.